Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to the new lecture of physics. Today we are going to study about capistor. So what is capistor? So the simple definition of capistor is capistor is an electronic component that stores electric charge. Yeah, capistor is a device which can store the electric charge. So the capistor is made of a two close conductor or you can made of two parallel two plates that are separated by a dielectric material let's see what is it. we have a let's see one plate this is your second plate okay so capacitor is made of two plates and between the two plates there is a dielectric medium there is a medium okay so these two plates they are connected with the battery or with the energy source it can be uh, it can be ac it can be dc it doesn't matter but just up to now up to this system we just say these two plates are connected with the source okay so let's see we can say this is positive terminal this is negative terminal this is positive and this is negative terminal so negative charge will be coming here and positive charge will be coming this so at this instance so the capacitor is going to be charged so this is called capacitor so capacitor is a uh, electronic device which can store the electric charge capacitor made of a two plates so both the plates are going to collect the charges so our plates collect electric charge when connected to a power source one plate accumulates positive charge and the other plate accumulates negative charge so a simple definition again the capacitance is the amount of electric charge so the capacitance is the amount of electric charge that is stored in the capacitor at voltage of a 1 volt. What does it mean? It, it says that, that when source is connected, this is your source V. So when voltage is going to increase, it means charge is going to be increased on the plates. Voltage is going to increase, charge on the plate is going to be increased. So it means that charge is directly proportional to the voltage so q directly proportional to voltage so when proportional is going to be uh, removed so what we can do we can make a constant so constant is c here so q is equal to cv and this is called capacitance of a capacitor this is constant for a capacitor so c is equal to q by v so now what is the si unit of capacitor so the si unit of a c or capacitor is farad what farad which is represented by f whenever you are going to buy a capacitor from a market so you always telling her telling the shopkeeper that give me a capacitor of a six microfarad five microfarad two microfarad so a farad is the unit of capacitor okay so capacitance of the capacitor is equal to the electric charge divided by the voltage which is electric charge uh, uh, in a coulomb that is stored in the capacitor, V is the voltage between the capacitor, C is the capacitance of a, in a farad, the capacitance is measured in the unit of farad. So now one farad, once we are, we need one farad, one farad means one coulomb charge and one volt. So one farad can be described as the capacitance which store a one coulomb charge across a potential difference of a one volt this is a potential difference of a one volt and one coulomb charge is going to be stored on a plate so this is called one farad keep in mind what is the definition of one farad when the charge is one coulomb and the potential difference is one volt this is called capacitor and uh, this is called one farad okay so coming to another slide so this slide is calculating the capacitance so we have a two plates if you can see we have a two plates and the plates have a positive and negative charge and we have a potential difference which is represented by VAB okay so plate A and a plate B so plate A area A and a plate B area again it is same so what should be the distance between the two plates so the distance between the two plates is D now okay the distance between the plate or the separation distance between the two plates is D so let the conducting plate have a area A and separated by distance D. Okay. Uh, the magnitude 
of the electric field between the two plates is given by this this is your electric field between a two plate what why we are saying that electric field because whenever we have a static charge so whenever there is a static charge means there will be a electric field and the electric field is equal to sigma divided by epsilon naught so this equation basically uh, approve this equation basically uh, prove from a gauche's law so we where we can say electric field is equal to sigma divided by epsilon naught so keep in mind because this uh, this proof can be solved in a gauche's law so now the sigma is the basically what uh, and the sigma is equal to one thing keep in mind sigma is equal to charge per unit area so we can say this sigma called charge density as well so charge per unit area okay so this is called sigma so put charge per unit area because we have a charges we have a area so the sigma is replaced by q by a so electric field is equal to q divided by epsilon naught e so now we treat the field between um, being a uniform allowing us to write so now we can find the potential difference between the two plates which is v a b so v a b is equal to e d and this is called potential gradient this v a b is called potential gradient potential gradient this is called potential gradient which is equal to v is equal to e d this is called potential gradient and we know about e e is equal to q divided epsilon naught a so q is divided epsilon naught a and d will be here this is the pressure between the two plates so this is basically formula for a potential difference how we can calculate the potential difference between a two plate of a capacitor okay so now coming to the calculating the capacitance so putting the uh, these all together we have for a capacitance as we know v is q is equal to c v this is the formula for a capacitor keep in mind always q is equal to c v is the formula for the capacitor and c is equal to q by v c is equal to q by v this is called capacitor formula so now we can be write like c is equal to q divided by v and v is equal, v was between the two plates of a b so this q divided by v a b so when we are putting the values so the result will be epsilon naught a divided by d so this is a formula so putting the values of v a b from this equation then simplified it so it will be equal to epsilon naught a divided by d so whenever somebody is going to ask you that find the capacitance of a capacitor when we have a dielectric medium between the plates so whenever we have a epsilon naught you know about permittivity so this is called epsilon naught is always is like equal to one this epsilon naught is like we have a air we have a low medium we have a air or a free space we can also call it free space or air space a medium so we have a free space between the two plates so we can use this but except the free space if we have a water like see this is for your uh, we have a copper or we have a uh, uh, paper or we have a water like this once we have uh, this kind of a medium between the plates so we will use epsilon if you remember we studied about in a coulomb law epsilon then so the formula for the capacitance of a capacitor is equal to epsilon naught a divided by d so keep in mind that the d is inversely proportional to the capacitance of a capacitor when the distance between the two plates is going to increase it means the capacitance of a capacitor is going to be reduced once the area between the two plates is going to increase so the capacitance of a capacitor is going to be increased it means that capacitor of a capacitor is directly proportional to the area and capacitance of a capacitor is inversely proportional to the separation of a distance between the plates okay so this is a basic geometrical way of a capacitor so now coming to the uh, energy of a capacitor so it means energy is stored in a capacitor so how much energy will be stored in a capacitor for that we need a formula so initially let's see we have a two plates let's see we have a two plates okay and the source is connected and the source is connected here and the source is connected okay so initially the voltage is going to be zero 
initially the charge and the voltage is going to be zero then once the charge is start flowing from this way and this way so there will be a charge so initially we need to be take a average voltage because initially it will be zero after some time it's going to be increased so we need to have a we need to have an average value of voltage so initially the average voltage value it can be zero initially it will be zero and then it will be v okay so a, as we know about the voltage formula from a potential difference which is equal to q uh, which is equal to work divided by charge and we can also be used work as an energy so v is equal to u by q if you remember this uh, formula can be uh, proved in a potential difference or a potential energy so v is equal to u by q so now we need to have an energy so u is equal to v multiply with the q okay so you know about the q so q is equal to cv you know according to formula of capacitor so we know about the q q is equal to cv so put the for, uh, form uh, the value of a q in the equation this so it can be c v square divided by 2 okay so as you can see once we need to find out the average between the two values so we need to divide 0 plus we divide by 2 so put these value it, it's again it same 2 okay put it so it so energy store in a capacitor is equal to c v square divided by 2 so this is your formula for the energy store in a capacitor whenever somebody can ask you that how much energy will be stored in a capacitor so for that you need to have a uh, value of a capacitor of a capacitor in a farad you need to have a, a source voltage how much will be the source you can easily be find out the energy store in a capacitor now coming to the uh, combination of a capacitor like we have a two combination series combination and parallel combination so one thing keep in mind so in a series combination in a series combination voltage is going to be change voltage is going to be change and the current will always constant the current will always constant okay so keep in mind current is always going to be constant in a series oh then in a parallel it's going to be inverse now in a parallel voltage is going to be constant keep in mind even in a capacitor in a series combination of a capacitor or in a series combination of a resistor or in everywhere in the circuits whenever you have a series combination it means the voltage is going to be changed and the current is going to be constant in a parallel combination voltage is going to be a constant and current is going to be changed if you guys can know about remember the Kirchhoff law so this can be possible from a Kirchhoff law so keep in mind these two consider in a series combination and parallel combination so first of all we need to come to series combination so you know about the series how we can connect the uh, capacitor in a series combination so let's see we have a capacitor 1 capacitor 2 capacitor 3 so c1 c2 c3 okay and we have to be we have to be connect all this capacitor with a battery okay so now this is series if you can see this is a series so in a series combination again i'm telling you voltage is going to be changed so v1 v2 and v3 and the charge or the current because current is uh, directly proportional to charge so the current or the charge is going to be constant in a series combination okay so once so if you can see that the voltage in a capacitor one so v1 is equal to q divided by c1 why we say q because charge or current is same in the series combination in a v2 we have a q divided by c2 again the charge is constant v3 the charge is constant divided by c3 so we have a v1 v2 v3 so the resultant voltage will be the total voltage or the resultant will equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 so it can be combination of v1 v2 and v3 okay so basically it's formula but at then what we can do we just make the equivalent the sum of 
C1, C2, C3. So we can make this kind of a circuit to be a simple circuit. Like we have just one capacitor now. How it can be one capacitor? Once we add C1, C2, C3, and we will have a sum of uh, the equivalent value of capacitor. All the, it can be five capacitor, it can be ten, it can be hundred, it can be more than how much you need it. So just add all the capacitor. But how we can add the C, uh, capacitor in a series convenient for that we have a formula. So just stay here. I will tell you how we can add the value of a capacitor in a series combination. So this is basically C equivalent and this is your simplest. But just keep in mind that in a series combination voltage is going to be changed and the charge or the current is going to be constant. So let's come to the formula for series combination. So capacitor in a series so this is a general formula and i i will going to be uh, prove that so one divided by c equivalent is equal to it can be one divided by c1 plus one divided by c2 plus one divided by c3 and so on this is general formula so this general formula we need to prove it out fast okay in a series combination you guys know that we have uh, to uh, make sum of all the voltage because in a series combination voltage is going to be changed so v is equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 and v1 we have q divided by c1 for v2 we have q divided by c2 and v3 is equal to q divided by c3 so q divided by c1 plus q divided by c2 plus q divided by c3 so what is going to be constant and you know v is equal q is equal to cv q is equal to cv and c will equal to so v is equal v will equal to q divided by c okay so v is equal to q divided by c so put this value here q uh, v divided by where is it so so put this value q divided by c here and so what is going to do so the charges of all the capacitor is going to be the same okay so this charge so uh, take a uh, common the charge from all these so q will be con constant so it can be like this like we can say q divided by c is equal to q is going to be constant in a bracket then we can write 1 divided by c1 we can write 1 divided by c2 then we can write 1 divided by c3 okay so now this Q and this Q is going to be cancelled and the result will be 1 divided by C equivalent. 1 divided by C equivalent is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. So whenever you are going to be eat the capacitor of a capacitor in a series combination. So this is the formula how we can add the capacitance of a capacitor. You cannot add like okay C1 plus C2 plus C3 symbol. No. This is a basically a formula how we can add the capacitor of a capacitor in a series. Keep in mind always use this formula in a series combination. Always use this formula in a series combination. I repeat it because you need to keep in mind that. Okay, it's not a simple mathematic that you are going to be simply add. No, it is based on formula because in a series combination voltage is going to be a chain and the current is or the charges is always be constant in a series combination. Okay. So the equivalent you just take LCM and find out but don't use this one use this formula this is simple formula and you can be always remember it okay or you can also be use this formula as well okay now it's another example the equivalent capacitance of a two capacitor in series two we have a two capacitor so simply one over C equivalent to one, one divided by C1 plus one over C2 simple because we have a two capacitor F1 we have a three then go then you can move plus 1 over C3 plus 1 over C4 if you have 4 and 5 and so on. Simple formula for it. Okay. So just keep in mind this formula. From this formula you can refine that this. But again I am telling one thing more. Because we have 1 over C. 1 over C. And we always need to have a C. We need a C equivalent. We, we don't need 1 over C. So for that what we can do? We need to find C equivalent. So how you can find it out? Just uh, add all these values when you add it all these values, let's see 1 over C equivalent is equal to let's see I'm telling it can be equal to like 2 by 3 just for your information uh, this is equal to 2 by 3 and we need C so C value it, so, okay so, so flip the values so it will be 3 by 2 okay because we always need C values 
okay so just flip the value of your result so flip we, we flip it so it can be three by two so forward it again the same you can use this formula but you can also may uh, add all these values then flip your answer okay so now coming to the parallel combination of a capacitor so this is your parallel combination now if we have so we have a two capacitor now c1 and c2 if we have a three so just move it up c make it c3 here if you have four so make it c4 here so this will be parallel combination so now one thing again in a cap parallel combination voltage is going to be constant voltage is going to be constant but the current or the charges is going to be changed okay so now keep in mind this thing simple method simple formula but just remember the concept that in a parallel combination current is going to be changed now so now we have two capacitors c1 and c2 so according to the formula according to the formula of So charges is going to be changed now. So it means charges or current is going to be changed. So it means that the total charge is going to be changed and we have a two capacitor. So it can be Q1 plus Q2 because charge is going to be changed. So voltage is going to be constant now. Okay. So this is our basic formula now. So now we can find out the C values. So we know about Q is equal to CV. Q is equal to C v so v is constant it means c is going to be changed so it can be for a q1 it can be c1 v1 for a q2 it is going to be c2 and v because v is constant okay so now coming to the formula side so we need we have to be so this is our formula now that So as we know, Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2, and so you, we know Q is equal to CV. So Q is equal to CV, and Q1 will be C1V plus C2V. Okay. So now, what is constant uh, common between and these two V? V is constant. So put put it uh, in outside in the bracket. So it will be V in the bracket C1 plus C2. So V and V is going to be cancel. So C will equal to C1 plus C2. So now this is your formula in a parallel combination in a parallel combination you just simply add your capacitor like a mathematics c1 plus c2 like let's see we have a c1 is equal to 2 and c2 is equal to 4 so 2 plus 4 is 6 simple but in a series if you remember in a series it was changed but in a parallel it's a change formula so both are have a some differences between each so keep in mind the concept that in a parallel combination the charge or the current is going to be changed in a series combination the voltage was going to be changed okay so this is the formula again if you can you can be proved by this way as well you can prove it by this as well so at the result the result will be the same so the result is equal to c equal to, c equal to c1 plus c2 like come to the another thing now once we have a three capacitor that we have a three c1 c2 c3 but this is a parallel combination okay in a parallel combination one to keep in mind again another thing we have a node this is if you can see this is a node N what is node node mean that it when the current is going to be entered in the node is going to be changed in a two or three or four or five direction and this is a node again it's coming and it's going to be changed in two to three direction okay it's coming to end so this is like a node so if you can see the charge or current coming here so it's going to be changed let's see it's going to be changed in this direction it's going to be changed in a this this direction so current is going to be changed again here it's going to be changed so that's why we say that that in a parallel combination the current or the charge is going to be changed and the voltage is always be constant okay so now if we have a three capacitors so c1 c2 c3 so simply add c3 this is simple okay so this is basically a general formula for the number of a capacitor uh, in a c in a parallel combination so c equal is equal to some summation of c it can be c1 c2 c3 c4 and so on and once you add c1 c2 c3 and this is your resultant circuit this will be uh, like a, your equivalent capacitor let's see c1 was 1 c2 was 1 c3 was 1 so 1 plus 1 plus 1 it can be 3 
So 3, capital C is 3 now. So this is our resultant formula. Okay. So now coming to the power. What is power or what is electric power? So uh, power is defined as the rate of uh, doing work. Rate of doing work. So we have a work per unit time. We can say one work per unit time is called power. So it is thus obtained by dividing the energy or work by the time. Mathematic. this is your actual formula for the power. And we, are, you can, we use a for formula for like this. So when W is the electrical energy, then P is the electrical power is given by. So if you can uh, use this formula, so this formula is used in a uh, kinematics like animation. We need to have a power of W by T once you are doing work once you are doing work then okay but when you are talking about electricity so in electricity we have a two things voltage and current so in electricity so we have our in a static or in electromagnetism so power is always equal to uh, voltage multiplied with current this is our basic formula for the electricity or the electromagnetism and uh, for the power okay so p is equal to vi or p is equal to iv so simply P is equal to V I. Okay. So one thing about Ohm law. Uh, so you know about Ohm law. Ohm law is always equal to uh, V is equal to I R. Okay. Ohm law is always equal to V is equal to I R. This is the formula of Ohm. So, so about Ohm law, one thing this voltage is always directly proportional to the current of a so this is ohm law voltage directly proportional to current so when proportionality is going to be cut out so it will be resistor because current is always going in a conductor and every conductor have their internal resistance so that's why we can use v is equal to i r this is ohm law and ohm law is used for the resistance keep in mind ohm law is used for the resistance so v is equal to i r and we know about the formula of power p is equal to v i so p is equal to v i so we have v is, v is equal to i r so put it here it can be p is equal to i square r this is one formula for a power we can all be also use value for the i we know about v is equal to i r okay so i value is equal to v divided by r so now you can put value of i here you can put value of i so p is equal to I will be V divided by R multiplier, so it can be V squared divided by R. So we can use formula of a power in two terms. Once we have uh, current in a conductor, so use this formula. Once we have a voltage, once we have a source uh, across the conductor, so we can use this formula. But in both, we have a constant or we have a value of resistance because Ohm law is about a resistance of a material because when the current or the voltage is flow in a conductor, so it means every conductor have their internal resistance. So how much losses? So power means how much losses you have, how much losses you have in a conductor. So if you remember that uh, that uh, uh, most of the electrician always telling that that use this kind of a cable, use this kind of cable. Why they are saying? Because they are saying that every cable have their internal resistance so somebody can say use the copper somebody say aluminum and etc 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 so every conductor have their own characteristic based on their internal resistance so those conductor are uh, are a best conductor which have a low internal resistance which have a low internal resistance that are a good or a best conductor so every conductor have their own losses so this power is just like about the losses of a conductor so if you have a current is known so your power will be in term of a current once you have voltage is known so your power will be in term of voltage so this was your lecture about the capacitor so capacitor ohm law and the combination of a series and a parallel capacitor so hope this lecture will help in your learning once you have any question, kindly raise your question and I will try to be answered. Thank you for your time.